Number one, adsorption is one of the earliest methods based on which chromatography has been developed. This is the materials or components of a mixture can be resolved based on based on their adsorption, relative adsorption affinities. The meaning is that simply because we have a mixture of A plus B plus C, then a mixture containing A plus B plus C, three compound, eternally mixture you may call it, and it can be separated based on the column material or the adsorbent that we fill in a column and that column or that adsorbent may have different adsorption affinities towards the different components of the mixture. Say for instance, of the three from the column, C comes first, A comes next, B comes last. Let us take it that way. Say for example in the column, we are using the column and we are trying to put the mixture on the top and we are eluting the mixture and here after some time of elution you get C is coming here, A is coming here and B in the top. What, is, what, what do we understand by that? The column packing material or the adsorbent material that is adsorbent, adsorbent material that we use has got the least of adsorption affinity with component C. Because of that, once you put the column, mixture on the top of the column and try to elute with the solvent, C is coming out of the column first, indicating that the C has got, component C has got minimum adsorption affinities towards the adsorbent material that is column packing material. Then comes what? Then A is coming out, indicating that if you compare C and A, A has better adsorption affinity with the adsorbent material than C. So C is coming first, A is coming next. What about B? B is almost remaining in the column. Of the three, for the longest time it is remaining in the column, indicating that B has got the maximum adsorption affinity towards the adsorbent material that we are using. That means the basis of separation here is the adsorption affinities towards the components of a mixture. That means the adsorbent is playing a role of separating the mixture into its components. That's what we call it, call it as resolution of a mixture into its components on the basis of adsorption. Then you may ask what is adsorption? Adsorption is a physical phenomenon. For instance, a gum, a gum can stick on the surface of a material or surface on a, of a paper. That means gum has some adsorption affinities with the paper that we are using. Or adsorption, adsorption is a surface phenomenon. Then what is affinity? Affinity is not a chemical reaction, not a chemical bond. It is a simple physical phenomenon where a non-bonding affinity or non-bonding interaction between the surface layer and the adsorbent has got or adsorbent will have a surface which has got a capability of interacting with any material with certain amount of or with certain non-bonding interactions. Non-bonding interactions in this sense. For instance, in this example, if you see C, C is not able to show those interactions with the adsorbent in such a way that 
C is least adsorbed with the adsorbent material. In the presence of a eluting liquid or eluting material, C is coming fast out of the column. That means C is unable to extend or unable to exhibit any sort of adsorption affinities or affinities towards the adsorbent material. Then comes next. Of the three, C come, B is the most adsorbent material, adsorbing material. That means B has got greater affinity towards the adsorbent. C has got the least affinity towards the adsorbent. Thereby, C is eluted first, then comes A, and last comes the B. This is the way a component can be physically separated. As you can see, this is separation by simple physical means using an interaction which is essentially a surface interaction. This is one of the earliest methods of separating, separation used or basis of separation used in chromatography. And as I told you, it is, of the, it is one of the oldest, but still even today it is one of the most valid methods of, very popular methods of adsorb chromatograph techniques. So the best example for this is always column chromatography. Once we have seen the adsorption methods, a large number of adsorbents are available. In fact, if you see the suppliers list of adsorbent materials, you may be surprised to see today we have a large number of synthetic, semi-synthetic, natural and mineral type of adsorbents available. The beauty of that is simply because of their application. That's the reason why initially I told chromatography is an art, more of an art than science. In fact, people consider it as a technique. Although it is science of itself, science by its, its by itself, but chromatography is more of a technique, more to be practiced. That's the reason why a large number of adsorbents are available. The best example for this, I can quote a couple of best examples for adsorbents. You may understand, silica gel. In fact, it is silicic acid chemically and it's plenty available. The sand is a source of silicic acid and silicic acid or silica gel is one of the earliest and still the modifications, a large number of modifications of silica gel are be, still being used as adsorbents very, very successfully. The other one is alumina. Alumina is hydroxide, aluminum hydroxide, a jelly material. It is also very, very popularly used. As you can understand, silica gel is acidic type because silicic acid, al aluminum hydroxide, as it is a basic substance, you can understand the difference between application. If you have the material which is suitable for separation, seems to be adsorbing to an acidic adsorbent, it's better if you use silica gel. Of course, its modifications for an appropriate usage are available. The other one, of course, we have a basic material, aluminum hydroxide, which can also be used for its appropriate purposes. Well, this is first type of or first basis of separation, which was the first experiment and still valid today is adsorption type of chromatography. 